In this video, I'll show you three hidden tricks for masking in Affinity Photo. For my first trick, I'll show you how to use one mask to control multiple adjustment layers. To see how this works, I'm first going to add a couple of adjustments, but since this is a masking tutorial and not a retouching tutorial, I'm not going to do anything too fancy here. I'll just quickly add two adjustments, and I'll make them look pretty extreme so it's easier for us to see what's going on. Okay, now that we have two adjustments, how can we mask both of them at the same time? To do this, we'll first put the layers into a group, which you can do by pressing Ctrl G on a PC or Command G on a Mac. Next, we'll add a mask to the group. This mask will affect everything that's in the group. So at this point, we could paint black over the areas where we don't want the adjustments applied, or we can invert the mask with Command or Control I, and then paint white over the areas where we do want the adjustments applied. And now that we've set up the mask, we can easily add more adjustments to it. To see this, I'll just add a white balance adjustment, and then I'll add a little bit of magenta to the photo. Then I just need to make this adjustment a child layer to the group. Now that all of the adjustments are in the group, the one mask we made can control all of them. So by masking a group, you can easily apply multiple adjustments to a specific area. Okay, that was my first masking trick for you, but for trick number two, I want to show you a really cool way to control a group's mask. To see this trick, I'll first delete the mask that we painted on, and then I'll add a new mask. And just as before, I'll invert the mask by pressing Command or Control I. But this time, instead of getting out the paintbrush, we'll get out the ellipse tool. Now with the ellipse tool, I'm just going to make a big oval. Using this oval, we can actually control the group's mask. All we need to do is make the oval a child layer to the mask. Now the mask is only visible where the oval is. But now here's the really cool part. If I get out the move tool, you'll see that as I move or resize the oval, the mask will instantly change right along with it. And as a little bonus tip, you can turn on hide selection while dragging from the context toolbar. This option will hide an object's bounding box as you move it around, making it easier to see when you're moving it. But you might be thinking, this mask looks a little too sharp. Well, fortunately for us, that's an easy fix. All we need to do is add a Gaussian blur filter to blur the circle. And if 100 pixels isn't enough for you, just type in a bigger number. As you can see, a simple blur filter can really help to improve your masks. And even with this filter applied, we can still easily move and resize the oval. Okay, now it's time for my final trick. For trick number three, let's say you wanted to do the opposite of trick number two and have your mask be visible everywhere except where the oval is. To do this, you could normally just invert your mask, but that actually doesn't work in this particular situation. That's because the oval will always register as a white section of the mask, even if we change its fill to black. It's a little weird, I know, but I have a different technique that we can use. Instead of using a mask, we'll use blend modes. So to see this in action, I'm first going to add two more adjustment layers. Using two simple adjustments, I'll darken the photo and desaturate it as well. With these adjustments, we'll be able to create a vignette going around the edges of the photo. And just as before, we'll place the adjustments into a group. Then I'll make another oval.
but now here comes the trick. This time, we're going to change the oval's blend mode to Erase. Using this blend mode, everything under the oval is being erased. But we don't want the whole photo to be erased, we just want to erase our two adjustment layers. Well, to do that, all we need to do is make the oval a child layer to the group. Now the oval is erasing everything in the group, which makes it so the two adjustments are visible everywhere except for where the oval is. And just as before, we can move and resize the oval whenever we want. Let's also add another Gaussian blur filter to soften the edges of our oval mask. And just like that, we've masked these adjustments to the edges of the photo, creating a vignette effect. But as one final tip for you, I just want to mention that you don't have to use an oval for these masking tricks. You can use any of the shape tools, or even a custom shape that you make with the pen tool. Okay, with that, we're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.